What is a golden shower? I don't want to say that. Hi guys, I'm Stevie, and today I have the lovely Jessica Kelgren Fozard here with me, and I thought that I would make her guess some sexy terms and see if she knows what they mean. And I have a feeling that you're gonna know what they all mean, actually. Really? Yeah, I think I think everybody's gonna be like, oh my god, surprising. <gasps> Surprised that Jessica knows things. Yeah, yeah I, I, I do actually use the internet. It's shocking, <laughs> I realize. <laughs> I did not expect you to say the internet. Mm. I thought you'd be like, I'm an adult who has sex. Like, oh, obviously. Well, I am happily married. I'm also deeply monogamous though. <laughs> and um, oh, this is I was pretty with... much a virgin when I met my wife, so. Oh my God. Okay, Disney princess, here we go. So I chose some hopefully monetization friendly BDSM words. You just said BDSM. How is that monetization friendly? Okay, so the first term is rack. Oh, we have that one, boobs. <laughs> when you're like, no. someone has a nice rack. No. It's an acronym. So, so it's R-A-C-K and it stands for something. Can you guess what it's what? about? What? R-A-C-K. I'm trying to think of dirty words that begin with R-A-C or K. I'm too dyslexic for this. <laughs> So it stands for risk aware consensual kink. So it used to be Why S did you think I would know that? I'm not. It's like tricking people into learning things, you know? Oh, okay. <laughs> I like making people learn things too. Well, it used to be SSC. So it used to be, it's like a general rule that you try to follow when you're playing. So it used to be safe, sane, and consensual. But the nature of a lot of BDSM is not necessarily safe. And so yeah. like, what does safe mean? Sure. Um, so we, not we, but sure, the community- just not going to die. Yeah, well, the, so the community decided to start using the word rack. So to talk about being risk aware. So aware of all of the risks, every single party involved is aware of the risks. Okay. So that you can make decisions that reduce the amount of bad things that can happen. Sure. And also consensual, because if you are not aware of the risks, then you can't really consent. Very true. Next is negotiation. That's just a word. Yeah, but what does it mean in a BDSM context? Um, that you both agree on what you're about to do. So you talk about it, and one of you says, I'd like to do this, and the other one says, okay, but maybe like halfway, and then the other one's like, sure, let's do that. That's the negotiation. Yay, you nailed it! Yeah, so before you play anything, you negotiate all of the stuff that you do want to do, that you don't want to do, that you might want to do, but you're not sure. Nailed okay. it. You got one. I love that you were like, boobs. <laughs> I know this one, boobs. <laughs> Fine. Okay, what is a hard limit? Oh, that's just something you definitely will not do. So you're like, we could do this halfway, but definitely not the full way. Nailed it. You got another one. Yeah, hard limit specifically is something that even if you're like the dom or the top in a scene, you're not allowed to break hard limits just because there's a power exchange and the person's a submissive or a bottom. So a hard limit is like, people will have soft limits that's like only do this for extreme like punishment or like tease that you might do it or whatever, but hard limit is like, don't even, you know. It's don't like, even think about it. Yeah. I wanted to do safe word, but everybody knows what safe word is, so I'm not gonna do that one. Okay, what is a masochist? Oh, these again are just words. Like they're not yeah. specific to the BDSM community. I know, but it's um, great to see. I think people are gonna be interested in seeing you say the word masochist on masochist. camera. Masochist, <laughs> masochist. A masochist is someone who enjoys pain being done to themselves. Yeah. Experiencing pleasure when you're in pain. Nailed it. Wow, this video is going great. What is a sadist? A sadist is someone who enjoys inflicting pain on others. Yes. Oh my God, you're killing it. Before we were filming, I was like, it'd be so funny if she just like nailed every single one and then look what's happening. <laughs> Except for Rack. <laughs> Boobs. What does vanilla mean? That would be like boring and plain. Hmm. I mean, people so, say that, but vanilla is actually my favorite flavor. Oh well. You're so perfect. <laughs> so in a BDSM context, what do you think vanilla means? Um, Sex that's not particularly out there. Yeah. yeah. So it can either describe a person or a situation. So it would be not kinky. I personally think that how vanilla someone is, is how 
okay they would be in their primary relationship with no kink involved. So like, okay. I'm pretty vanilla, cause like I don't, you know, I don't need to have a partner that is into kink. Okay. Um, but I'm also pretty kinky too, you know what I mean? Cause so you can be a percentage of each and they don't necessarily inform each other. Um, but then also the activities without kink is a vanilla activity. But it's sometimes people are like, oh my God, she's so vanilla, you know? Like, oh, these vanillas over here are trying to pretend like whatever, I don't know. Cool. What is an electro slut? Oh, I was doing well until now. <laughs> an electro slut. <laughs> um, I'm having a great time. <laughs> someone who enjoys electronics? Hmm, that's a good guess. What else could it be? Someone that enjoys what else? That maybe begins with electro. Electromagnetism? Hmm. Being shocked? Yeah! Oh, you did it! All right. <laughs> but, okay, well done me. Yeah, so playing with electricity. So someone that likes having, like you can use cattle prods or stun guns, but some there's this really beautiful one. I'll show you a video later. It's called a violet wand and right. it like, you know those balls that you used to touch with your fingers yeah. and it would go like that? So it kind of looks like that on the inside and they have different shapes. And then you just like drag it across their skin and it, they like it. That sounds like hell to me. <laughs> I have to quite regularly go to the hospital and have electric shocks. Yeah. So yeah, some people like it. Because my nerves are broken. Mm. So they, they try to make them better with shocking. What is a golden shower? I don't want to say that. But you know what it is. I know that one because that one was on the news. <laughs> This was the best idea. <laughs> so a golden shower is someone who likes to have urine put on them, put on them, sprayed on them. They like to be peed on. So since you know what a golden shower is, what do you think a Roman shower is? Is it worse? <laughs> yes. Is it the same thing well, I mean, but worse? I guess, depending on who you are. I thought you would like this one because I thought maybe you'd know something about the Romans. Um, Next one. Yeah, we can move on. That one's that one's vomit. Um, so what do you think aftercare That's is? Actually kind of better this is... than I thought it was. <laughs> really? Oh, the you thought it was a brown shower. So you'd rather. So you think? Okay, yeah, we can move on. Oh, by the way, the Roman thing about the vomitorium isn't actually real. They didn't go in there to vomit. Oh, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know anything about Roman history, so I. Oh. But I thought you. <laughs> I I knew there was so a historical reference that. Because the Romans had a room called a vomitorium okay. next to where they ate. So people assumed that it was that they ate, would eat a lot. They go to the vomitorium, vomit, come back to the table and eat more. But that's actually not the case. That's not what the word vomit meant to them. It didn't mean the same thing. Interesting. So it was just like a miscommunication this whole time. Yeah. Huh. So maybe they should rename it something else. Maybe they should. It shouldn't be called a Roman shower anymore. Okay, the last word is aftercare. Oh, that's when you're nice to someone <laughs> after you have sex with them. Yeah, so when you you tend to everybody's needs and it's not just the submissive or the bottom that needs their needs cared for. Sometimes it's definitely the dom or the top and you look after any wounds. You maybe give each other candy to suck on to like get some more endorphins going. Okay cuddles, but you cover what you want in aftercare during the negotiation part. Okay. Yay! That was learning BDSM words with Jessica. <laughs> we made a video on Jessica's channel where we try a bunch of different British accents, but she's deaf and I'm American, so it's really terrible. But go check it out. I Watch it like for it. a laugh, but please don't judge us. <laughs> I mean, Josie did enough of that. So. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.